entered the den by the smell of her gabardine. Surge Procopia. His kleptomania increased in intensity. Now he couldn't pass a drugstore without running in and emerging with fan magazines. Alice James, his jockey shorts bulged with the proof of his current hypothesis. People hate fake intellectuals. Jane Bowles, only a few things matter. Marcel Proust, Marcel Proust. Magda met Hop Singh in the refugee camp and immediately fell in love. This cowboy, he cooked good, she thought in broken English. Hop Singh, a cripple of some sort, loved Gershwin. This proves what the foreign born can do in a land of opportunity. Magda was enormously fat. They embarked on a thousand mile joyride that included revolutionary acts. Rent strike did not shift power web. They named the spread Mazzola, the mansion Il Ponderosa. Marcel Proust, my sex life has included the following. Great hits of famous composers, palaces of dance, adzes. My love life is twisting slowly in the wind. My night life she ho -kay, boss. My spiritual life nourishes hungry throngs. My life on other planets has been pleasant, but now I must return to my own people. My former life is on TV in 1955. This is your life, somebody insists in a foreign language. Then come noises. The room is full of strong air. American baseball. It's for real, not for practice, and it's televised, not secret, the way you'd expect a civilized country to handle delicate things. It's in color, it's happening now in Florida. This is American baseball, the announcer announces as the batter enters the box. We are watching, and it could be either of us, standing there waiting for the pitch, avoiding the eyes of the pitcher as we take a few practice cuts, turning to him and his tiny friends in the outfield, facing the situation, knowing that someone behind our backs is making terrible gestures, standing there to swing and miss the way I miss you, wanting to be out of uniform, out of breath, in your car, in love again, learning all the signals for the first time, the way we learned the rules of night baseball as high school freshmen. First base, you kiss her. Second base, her breasts. Third, you're in her pants and home is where the heart wants to be all the time, but seldom can reach past the obstacle course of space, the home in our perfect future we wanted so badly and want more than ever since we learned we won't live there, which happens to lovers in civilized countries all the time and happens too in American baseball when you strike out and remember what the game really meant. Some for Ann Waldman. Some of the light comes through the glass. Some of the noise leaks in. Some of the cars keep moving. Some of the drivers fall asleep. Some of the words are meaningless. Some of the clouds are full of rain. Some of the lakes evaporate. Some of the plants are dangerous to eat. Some of the planes take off. Some of the species grow extinct. Some of the rooms have free TV. Some of the films make you laugh. Some of the books are never read. Some of the relationships thrive. Some of the friends move far away. Some of the pictures fade. Some of the girls are deadly. Some of the men are bores. Some of the songs have special meanings. Some of the children give you a hard time. Some of the pain is forgotten. Some of the days are truly great. Some of the sounds are music to your ears. Some of the trees fall down. Some of the dreams are frightening. Some of the debts are paid. Some of the show is over. Some of the food is left untouched. Some of the fears are groundless. Some of the monks are deep in prayer. Some of the sex is terrific. 
Some of the pets escape. Some of the tools are useless. Some of the ink will not wash out. Some of the instruments are out of tune. Some of the socks are clean. Some of the states forbid it. Some of the students go to class. Some of the snow accumulates. Some of the situations are pretty strange. Some of the stars are dead. Some of the air is full of smoke. Some of the land is covered by the sea. Some of the time goes by. Gilligan's Island. The professor and Ginger are standing in the space in front of the skipper's cabin. The professor is wearing deck shoes, brushed denim jeans, and a white shirt open at the throat. Ginger is wearing spike heels, false eyelashes, and a white satin kimono. The professor looks at her with veiled lust in his eyes. He raises an articulate eyebrow and addresses her as Chocho-san. Ginger blanches and falls on her knife. Meanwhile, it is raining in Northern California. In a tiny village on the coast, Rod Taylor and Tippy Hedren are totally concerned. They realize that something terrible is happening. Each has been savagely attacked by a wild songbird within the last 24 hours. Outside their window, thousands of birds have gathered in anticipation of the famous schoolyard scene. Tippy Hedren is wearing a colorful lipstick. Ginger stares back at the professor. His sullen good looks are the perfect foil for her radiant smile. The skipper and Gilligan come into sight. The skipper has been chasing Gilligan around the lagoon for a long time now. Gilligan holds onto his hat in the stupid way he has of doing things like that. The professor's lips part in a sneer of perfect contempt. Ginger bares her teeth as if in appreciation. Jackie Kennedy bares her teeth. Behind and above her, the muzzle of a high-powered rifle protrudes from a window. A little man is aiming at Jackie Kennedy's husband. The man is wearing blue jeans and a white t-shirt. There isn't a bird to be seen. As he squeezes the trigger, the little man mutters between clenched teeth, certs is a candy mint. The hands of Jackie Kennedy's husband jerk automatically toward his head. The professor is noticing Ginger's breasts. He thinks of the wife he left at home, who probably thinks he's dead. He thinks of his mother and all of the women he has ever known. Mr. and Mrs. Howell are asleep in their hut, secure in their little lives as character actors. Ginger shifts her weight to the other foot. The intensity of the moment reminds the professor of a Japanese city before the end of the war. In his mind, he goes down each aisle in his government class, focusing on each face, each body. He is lying on his bed with his white shirt off and his trousers open. Dorothy Kirsten's voice fills the room. He settles on a boy who sits two desks behind him. He begins to masturbate, his body moving in time with the sad music. At moments like these, he feels farthest away. As he shoots, his lips part and he bares his teeth. The professor and Ginger are watching each other across the narrow space. The skipper and Gilligan have disappeared down the beach. The howls are quietly snoring. The professor and Ginger are alone. From the woods comes the sound of strange birds. From the water comes a thick and eerie tropical silence. The famous conversation scene is about to start. Clouds appear in the sky, and it begins to snow. Two more. Flaming Angel, the animal strings of Prokofiev can be inside you, too. That is the hardest thing, to watch what you have never known through animal eyes. Another flaming angel is in front of you. He wants you effortless and shining the way he insists you can be. But your heart is full of animals, the way the earth is full of them and empty as the earth can be, holding them all. And this is a note to J.A. 
the famous heroines toddle up the ramp, burdened by their own sad stories. This is overwhelmingly real, but our lives go on nonetheless. Like wheelchair detectives, we reach for the sky and come back with hands full of energy. It dissipates faster than our eyes can record. <laughs> Back on the floor. Brad's going to read from the Daily News, which is a book of his, and some other poems. Brad Gooch. <clears throat> Nude. A gray flower made of wire and soft paper is touched by a tiny match held in my hands. The sky is a watch. The minute hand slices a cloud in two on its way to one. The magic number of flowers grows. In a song, the gray flower dies of a stem disease. Cars span the distances, taking my voice to you, surrounded by a long body with few weeks old beard. Daddy is a sleepy house. Mom shakes the earth when she walks from planet to planet with her wooden plank. I walk the plank in a striped suit. The nude boy plays basketball in high school. Later in the morning, he will get up, covered in a light that is really in my heart. Turning and turning, the flame goes around. The gas burner, ready to support the soup with its hot waves, recording each word they say to one another and what it means in the life of the bed, which is a piazza among the many streets and hours that lead in and out of bed. I snooze past the anxious hours into the really mad hours. Now you goddamn idiot, get out and don't come back until you've found a job. And love me impersonally, the way you love that starfish for simply being on the beach, in a paralyzed state, under the sun, over the sand, and then I'll take you in through the stomach, up the elevator to the light of the eyes, shining over our city like car headlights on a parking deck. Opinion. Something like the Middle Ages is coming back. Monasteries are smarter than communes with rules worked out to prevent, not cause, problems. The Cistercians, Trappists, should think about regrouping in space stations. Space is the modern equivalent of North African deserts. The monody of computer music is the modern equivalent of Gregorian chants. Psychology is most like the weather and least like a secret bureaucracy of id and ego. Thomas Aquinas' psychology makes more sense than Freud's and is more precise, though X equals angels and Y equals devils. That is, the words stop us short. What was the frame is now between channels, the patterns of gray space. Cocaine equals Paris, white and spacey. Acid equals New York, mental and fast, invigorating. The meditative poets of the 16th century are back a conceit is a metaphor, but from the opposite side of the brain. Prayer is exercise. Memory should be kept in spite of memory banks. The color of the 70s is gray with silver a close second. Icon, blackboard, word, invisibility. Language is the big issue for environmentalists. Trees are secondary, though definitely there. Important to speak with sinuous or alive words something like first ideas on rhetoric in order to preserve the planet. What you say turns into a wave, which turns into the furniture eventually on which you sit. The only symbolic one-to-one -one language is the world. Any thinking which leaves out a part of the world, as math does to verbs, and A.J. Ayer to church hymnals, 
was invented to shut out rather than include the world. The mind is not a hat. The day is Mozart. The night is music to dance to. <clears throat> Mixed feelings. Again, have to admit to stars, cups, warm feeling to you, who I am afraid of because you are young, filled with lies, hate, blaming the wrong person when it is you who are missing in action. This Maya could turn the dragon's teeth against me, but I know better, and mixed in I see you in grass haze, unusually long day, wearing a girl's face, being too concerned with the past, showing off your underwear in complete self. You are not ugly, but sometimes not as darkly handsome as I imagine when away from you, or looking outside in to the idea you in question. I would like to convert you, to cure you of Irish need for children and arbitrary disciplines that only simulate true character. In the blurry eyes of the anemone, a secretion of our universe flows, and in your secret self, all the necessary duties carried out into a bleached out sky horizon. On your palm, I see railroad tracks leading into a small town. Your happiness is here. There is a spot, antennae on houses, where all your rivers, lines, compactly meet in sweet shade from tree fences. Your expansion and beauty muscle build an angel man. Your hand is beginning to flower and green infuses the paler shades. You are on your way. I am the waver at the station, both stations, going and coming. I have enough iron to build you tracks and enough imagination to fill in a blue-green sky, which you might forget to do in your desire to rush there, thinking you have left us behind, whose scrutable faces are the map of the rest of your life. Get used to us. As for me, blink, blink, as for me. <clears throat> Looking forward. Two days go by. The first electric white in and around the trees, most contracted in white streets. You don't come by. The second closes in. Possibilities screen out the faces. Hot, humid weather turning to showers by late afternoon. By late afternoon, no trees, no doors. High cliffs slice aside reliefs, hills. And as a perpendicular line intersects and passes through the circle, each one of my thoughts is eventually you in a different aspect, ocean, peninsula, island. Here in your necklace of rouge skulls, here in a kind of hatha yoga floating routine, elbows, knees positioned to make a fish, the waves barely hitting your skimming stomach, the blue fire circulating over and over in my own system, a biofeedback model, a new look at loneliness, and yet you prefer this harbor to the clatter of the wrong ones. Knee deep in the water, fishermen's boots, the light, light part moon, in gorgeous blue early morning sky. By gorgeous, I mean coming. I mean transparent, vulnerable, with no clothes on, looking you cautiously in the eye, where it all happens. The fish catching, the rocks monsterizing in deep dark. The tiny line of thought passing out from the fisherman, his cold curvature forehead into spaces. No family, no theory of natural selection, no blues, no silvers, no noises, no songs just passing along as sheep into dawn. The object not to catch a fish, seen now as a weight on the line, but to feel in the line velocity a certain tug, like the tug of a lady firefly, expressed in blimps of orange fire, revolving expressively on the leaf platform, her immaculate wish to come by having him come to her. <coughs>
felt life. Further clearing, turn it into water, angels, feelings, or a circle, or a line, a snake, miles of ice unskated. Something is wrong. We have derailed and coming back, coming back into a sentient rock, but stop at ice pond for a look, see? Feeling has no eyes. Temperature goes way up, but rock unbudge thousands of. Grabbing onto each another in solid black fright, thousands of hands, a twine of hair throbbing, oh, go away, you, is underwater well of ink black water resting. Interrupted by big guppies and frogs and flies asterisking the surface of the blank water, here felt life. Now sultry, it is always night. No messengers, no distinctions, no subordinations of thought to thought, no boundaries of moving from stand to turn or counter turn. The ice long gone, baby's hair, lace, or lash in the eye prevent seeing one way. Inviting, say, sheets of white thrown over bank building. I am lost and helpless at this corner. Please direct me to the emergency ward. Please detect, tap, 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 tap. The please detect song is being tapped out. Listen and then hum, but then go back, back down again. And the black inky water splashing over the palm and the black blood in the veins flash white. The veins look more like bones, more than one. This is why the Middle Ages is coming back. Because St. Augustine says the world is a book, many, many works were left unfinished. There was an aesthetic of unfinishedness. The picture moved because of an idea. Everybody was on the move. The gyrovage, the friars, the university professors. It seems that nothing is moving. The monks, the earth, there is only one melody. Looking at the illuminated letter, each man is concerned with the question of happiness. Through one window, you can see the busy town, Chaucer's apartment. Through the other window, you can see a very quiet green man. God lives here. One saint tries to get the other saint killed because the first saint is opposed to the natural sciences. It doesn't matter. The green field almost burns the eye of the sister passing in her white robes on a windy day, past the haystack of gold sizzling wires. All of the natural world is inlaid in the book of the heavens. The church satisfies a deep need for civil service, white flag, flag of the crusades. Joachim de Fiori's post-bureaucratic vision, a world in flower. If you take this book out of the monastery library on Easter, you must return it on the next Good Friday, finished or not. There is no publishing. The author has little control over his Scrivener and no control after that. Footnotes came much later. In fact, all art very conceptual. A man is glad to paint the same painting as another man. See Antonioni film of modern China. Nothing exact, but the white pajama bottoms in a similar yellow field. Man is this big here, and he is this big here. Later come the four-part harmonies of Ma Shou, which you can compare to four-track electronic music, but that is another subject. The flouncy feather and plain brown cap of a medieval boy and girl, walking, they like to walk. You are very tall, into no perspective, semiotic theory in the Middle Ages. <clears throat> yeah, that's it. Jimmy, miss, I was trying to get you apple juice, and the thing bit my hand about three times. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, I figured you needed it. The only problem is that it bit my hand and it cost a dollar five for that one can of apple juice. <laughs> Believe it or not. Want to sing along or something? <laughs> what are you gonna do? Are we still in yes, I mean, how much more time we have? Well, <coughs> I can talk about the show. This is public access poetry for anyone that, that's watching it and doesn't know what it, what it is they're watching or doesn't want to know. They know now. And uh, we'd appreciate any public responses. Thank God Ted isn't here. <laughs> and uh, let's see. Tonight, show was directed, the camera work was directed by Michelle Kraut. And I'm very bad at names, but I'll just go with first names. Marge and Vic ran the cameras. And <laughs> it was co-produced by Gary and Danny and myself. And we have three members of an audience here. Let's see the audience. <laughs> and uh, Tim and Brad Red. Tim and Brad Red, right? There's more. Marge, fantastic. You look good. You're not supposed to look, then we don't see your face. That's Marge. She's the woman that runs our camera pretty often, just about every week. And there's another shot of Tim. Well, this is like home movies. <laughs> Go ahead. Let's keep going. Say goodbye, Dee Dee. They're getting ready to say goodnight. Okay, see you next week.